pleased that the DUP have agreed to accept the package of measures that the UK government has put forward. And as a result, they are ready to return to the Northern Ireland Assembly and nominate representatives to the Northern Ireland Executive. <clears throat> I can confirm that today I've updated the Cabinet on this significant development. And as agreed with Sir Geoffrey, and obviously subject to the finalisation of all party talks today, I will tomorrow publish the details of the proposals we have made to secure Northern Ireland's place in the UK internal market and to strengthen the Union. I believe that all the conditions are now in place for the Assembly to return, and I look forward very much to the restoration of the institutions at Stormont as soon as possible. There was a financial package worth over £3 billion offered to the parties before Christmas. This will absolutely be available to an incoming executive. The parties entitled to form an executive are meeting today to discuss these matters, and I hope we'll be able to finalise this deal with, the, with those parties as soon as possible and move forward. And after that, I'm happy with questions. <coughs> Um, so, uh, no, it hasn't affected divergence in, in any way, shape or form. However, what has changed has been, I, I guess, a, a, an understanding on my part of uh, the needs of unionism in Northern Ireland and on, on the UK government's part, and um, a very long conversation with the Democratic Unionist Party on how we can um, make better uh, Northern Ireland's place in our internal market. Emma, Um, I, as I say, the financial package will be uh, available to the incoming executive. Uh, Sam Cape, Sky. Um, Secretary of State, <coughs> to repeat, what has changed? Are there going to be fewer checks on goods coming from Great Britain to Northern Ireland? How will Northern Ireland's place be different under this deal than it was previously? Or is it just a smoke screen? It's nothing really changed. Um, there are some significant changes, but you will have to wait until the the packages, but well not the packages finalised, but the football party talks are finalised, and when I publish the deal in, in Parliament, um, everyone will see what it is. How could there be a deal on the basis of a secret package? It's not a secret so package. We've been talking uh, because it is a uh, Sam. It, it's been a negotiation, and, and the negotiations have been between the, uh, the Democratic Unionist Party and the UK government. We have been talking to them over a period of weeks and months. The, there is a, a, a packaging place now that we are now briefing the uh, Northern Ireland political parties on. The, there are all party talks going on this afternoon in Northern Ireland, which I'm going to head off after this press conference to. When they have finalised, I'll be in a position to publish, and I will. Chris Mason, BBC. Thank you. Just picking up on Sam's question, Secretary of State, on the specifics of goods that are travelling from Juban to, to Northern Ireland. Is it right that they will be able to make that journey without checks and without paperwork? Just to follow up the question earlier about the money, particularly on the strikes from that Thursday, you're explicitly saying that that money doesn't get released until the point that you can choose to In other words, in all right that they're going to appear beyond that point on Thursday. Um, so, yes, the, I, the money is available to an incoming executive. And so uh, when the executive sits, that money will be freely available to that executive to. Uh, deal with as it sees fit and public pay um, is I mean is rightly a matter that is devolved and um, and so I believe they're the, the right people to be doing uh, that element of this business um, when it comes to I'm afraid you will Chris have to wait to see the to see the deal but um, we have been able to achieve quite a, a, a vast array of decent improvements to make sure to make sure our internal market works properly uh, as it should do, and you'll hopefully be able to see those tomorrow. Uh, John RTE. Um, uh, I and government colleagues talk to our European Union partners on a regular basis, and um, and I will continue to do so. We talk about all sorts of things, John. Uh, we talk about all sorts of things. I don't believe so. Uh, is the reason that you're keeping it quiet? Because you want to bounce the EU? Uh, nope.
Ben Where's Ben? Or GB News? Okay, uh, Ollie. Um, Secretary of State, what's your message to the people of Long Island who have seen this all before and who might be worried on the cusp of storm on returning that this is just another short term fix and they could be back in the same position again if one party chooses to look at Yeah, well, I, I, that's, it is actually. A that's a really significant question and a completely understandable one and a completely understandable point of view um, that lots of people in Northern Ireland do have. Um, we, the UK government, are completely committed to the Belfast Good Friday Agreement in all its, as in all its strands, in all, in all its ways, and we want the institutions to work. This um, is all about a strand one, the strand one institution of most importance to the people of Northern Ireland, its assembly, where elected, uh, directly elected uh, members of the Legislative Assembly go to take decisions on behalf of the people that elect them. It hasn't been working for two years. Previously to that, there was a period of COVID. Previously to that, there were three years where it wasn't working because uh, Sinn Féin chose not to meet. I would like to think that on the basis of this deal, um, we, and indeed on the basis of the storm at break that we have got in, in the winter framework, uh, we can truly demonstrate that the people of Northern Ireland do have a democratic check over the rules that affect them and that we can keep the institutions up and going in, per in perpetuity. So I really hope this deal does what it should be doing um, and history will be its test. Uh, finally, Channel 4. Uh, I am very confident. Uh, they're going to have to wait to see the deal and all of its outcomes. Cool, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it is just after 12 o'clock. If you're just tuning in, we're welcome. You're watching Sky News. That was the Northern Ireland Secretary, Chris Heaton Harris, who was giving his response to the talks that happened late into the night last night with the DUP. He said that he is pleased that the DUP have agreed to accept the measures that the UK government proposed. Uh, he was expecting to publish those measures tomorrow because it was conversations between the DUP and the UK government. What is now going to happen is they're going to go back to all the other political parties in Northern Ireland this afternoon and discuss it with them. Uh, he said he looks forward to the restoration of the government instalment as soon as possible. Of course, the people in Northern Ireland haven't had a legislative instalment for two years now. Let's bring in our political correspondent, Amanda Acas, who joins me now. Amanda, it does sound like there's been progress here, but of course, there's still a long way to go. They have to get all of the other political parties to agree and then after that, we will need to get the EU to agree as well, I would assume. Yes, absolutely. It's very complicated, isn't it? I think actually the Secretary of State there was sounding more confident than the other ministers that we've been hearing from thus far today, um, although he wouldn't really give away any of the detail of the nitty gritty of what is actually contained within this deal, which of course is what politicians across the spectrum are really waiting to see about it. Uh, we understand Cabinet will have had the chance to have a look at the details um, this morning and clearly the different parties Northern Ireland are discussing it this afternoon. We're told it will be published tomorrow. Um, now, in terms of what Sir Geoffrey Donaldson has been saying publicly, he's insisted that that there will be no um, new uh, zero. There will be no z no checks on goods moving from Great Britain to Northern Ireland um, and staying there, and it will end uh, EU law automatically applying in in Northern Ireland as well. Um, both of which are pretty key um, elements in terms of what the DUP wanted, but also would suggest fairly substantial changes to the Windsor framework, uh, which was announced uh, nearly a year ago and negotiated by Rishi Sunak with the EU in itself, a renegotiation of the original Brexit deal, which of course had that um, uh, barrier down the Irish Sea, which was seen as such a betrayal by the DUP in the beginning. Um, so the big question really is what have the UK government um, given ground on, really, in order to get the DUP to accept this arrangement. Um, 
Chris Heaton Harris um, said that they come to a greater understanding of the needs of unionists through these weeks and months of negotiations. He said he would have to wait and see the detail of the, de the deal to get more of a clear idea, although he did insist that they hadn't given ground in terms of divergence from EU rules, which I think is something that uh, Conservative and Brexiteer politicians, particularly in Westminster, will be most interested in, which is really looking at whether or not there's been an agreement that in the rest of the UK um, that there won't it won't be possible to to change rules which have come from the EU um, in order for um, the uh, rules in Northern Ireland um, not to diverge from the EU um, system. Now he says no, that's that's not the case. It's uh, the the sovereignty of Parliament will still be. Um, in place in terms of what rules we um, implement, um, as has been the case following Brexit. Um, he did say, we've been able to make decent improvements, ensure the internal market works properly, um, and also that he doesn't expect that we'll have to renegotiate with the EU, um, quite how they're managing to keep all of these different elements in balance, which has been so difficult for uh, politicians to negotiate over so many years since Brexit remains to be seen. Um, towards the end of the press conference, he, he, he seemed to be, um, it, it was a fairly heartfelt moment where he said history will be the test of this as to whether it works and referenced the fact that actually power sharing in Northern Ireland hasn't um, been working effectively for many years, um, with uh, Sinn Féin refusing to be part of the previous executive for a number of years, so there was no power sharing before COVID, and obviously the two years um, with the DUP, and saying that he hoped that this would lead to a more sustainable system in Northern Ireland with a, um, a permanent executive running.